Welcome to the NCDPI K3 Literacy video on learning to read. Have you ever wondered what it really takes to learn to read? We will explore how kids learn to read in our video. Think about this statement and ponder your initial reaction. Children learn to read the same way they learn to talk. Is this true or false? This statement is false. Children do not learn to read the same way they learn to talk. Settled research supports that language development is a natural process. Children learn to speak from observing adults using language. But while it is true language development is a natural process, settled research supports that learning to read is not natural to the human brain. This understanding comes from the body of research known as the science of reading. The science of reading is backed by decades of research that examined how to effectively teach children to read. This video will review key ideas from the science of reading that inform best practices of literacy instruction. Learning how to read involves major regions of the brain working together. The visual areas and spoken language areas need to learn to work together. Essentially, an extensive circuit is created from the processing systems and connecting pathways. Neuroscience has confirmed the brain has changed as a result of learning how to read. This is one way we know that learning to read does not happen naturally. Realizing the brain changes while learning to read is a good first step. But let's go a little deeper and talk about what it takes to learn to read. Naturally, it's a math equation. The simple view of reading is a formula developed by Goff and Tunmer in 1986. The ultimate goal of learning to read is reading comprehension. We want students to understand what they read. In this formula, reading comprehension is a product of decoding skills and language comprehension skills. Decoding skills help students to read the words and language comprehension skills help students understand the words. Weaknesses in either decoding or language comprehension affect a student's ability to comprehend what was read. The simple view of reading is purposefully formulated as a multiplication problem because the factors of decoding and language comprehension do not add to each other, but multiply across each other. Thinking about this mathematically, if one of the factors is zero, the outcome, or reading comprehension, is zero. But more realistically, if a student has some decoding skills and a few more language comprehension skills, the reading comprehension outcome is greatly impacted and not as strong as when both factors are fully developed. Let's keep diving down and talk about what it takes to develop decoding skills and language comprehension skills. Decoding and language comprehension skills are often broken down even more and displayed through another well-known model called Scarborough's Rope. This model takes the factors of decoding word recognition and language comprehension to visualize them as strands in a rope that lead to skilled reading comprehension. Let's pull the strands apart and discuss what it takes to become a skilled reader. Decoding and word recognition focus on the skills of decoding words. To get there, students need to have phonological awareness skills, the ability to hear and manipulate spoken sounds, Decoding skills, the ability to recognize letter-sound relationships and blend them to form words. And sight recognition, the ability to automatically recognize familiar words. These pieces are braided to form the word recognition strand. Language comprehension is the other main strand. This is broken down into background knowledge, vocabulary, language structures, verbal reasoning, and literacy knowledge. Let's say this teacher was going to read a biography of soccer star Mia Hamm, but one of her students had never played soccer. That student would have a harder time understanding the story. Knowledge built from experiences, along with an understanding of language, are the pieces braided to form the language comprehension strand. As students become more automatic with word recognition and more strategic with language comprehension, the two strands are woven together to build increasingly strategic comprehension skills. But like a true rope, if one strand is frayed or broken, the integrity of the entire rope is compromised. 
So if one or more of these strands in the reading rope is broken, skilled reading is compromised. Let's wrap up this video by talking about how the simple view of reading and Scarborough's rope apply to classroom instruction. Keeping all of this in mind, we can map how students are performing in literacy with the type of instruction and support they need by following a student profile for reading difficulty and skills gaps. Using the simple view of reading factors, we can begin to analyze that how well a student understands decoding and language comprehension impacts the goal of reading comprehension. Some students perform well in one or both areas, while other students may struggle in one or both areas. Thus, four student profiles guide us to determine the type of individual support the student needs. The first profile includes students who have good decoding skills and good language comprehension skills. Typically, these children learn to read and comprehend without extra interventions. The second profile includes students who have good decoding skills and poor language comprehension skills. These students struggle to understand what they read, even if they read it fluently. The third profile includes students who have poor decoding skills and good language comprehension skills. These students struggle to read words, but have a stronger understanding of comprehension. The fourth profile includes students who have poor decoding and language comprehension skills. Students in this profile struggle to decode words and understand the meaning of what they read. Using a student profile for reading difficulty helps students receive the right type of instruction. Students with good decoding and poor language skills need explicit comprehension strategies. Students with poor decoding and good language skills need explicit phonemic awareness and phonics instruction. And students who are struggling in both areas need a comprehensive explicit instruction program that addresses both decoding and comprehension skills. Improving literacy skills for each and every student will take commitment from adults across our communities. Ensuring students have strong early literacy instruction based on the science of reading is fundamental to this work. Please check out our resources on the K3 Literacy Read to Achieve repository to learn more about the science of reading, as we support teaching all students to read. References for this video are found with the script. Thanks for joining us today, and happy teaching!